folks, hello. <laughs> Recently, I was hanging out with my buddy Jake, who, for those of you that know, helped me with my social media. And we were brainstorming ideas for TikTok and for other content that we wanted to create. And one thing led to another, and I came across this. This is my old DVD collection. Before streaming, movies used to come on DVDs. Oh God, it's so heavy. Um, so these are all of the movies that I had on DVD. However, when I was flipping through, I came across these. What are those? Those are home movies. I was a vlogger before it was cool to be a vlogger. So I wanted to go through these today. So, you know, rainy days sometimes are a good day to go down memory lane. The problem I'm running into, I don't have a DVD player. Mine broke and then there was no reason to buy another one because it's all on streaming now. So I have an idea. I think I have an old laptop in one of my closets that still has like a CD drive, I hope. So let's go find that. This closet behind me is where I think the laptop is. There, I believe, is the laptop. How am I gonna get up there? I'm not sure. So I need to put you down and I'm gonna try maybe just standing on my wheelchair and see if I can reach that way. So I might be able to, oh, actually, oh, it's heavy though. No. Okay. <sighs> That's a bad idea because it's heavy. And if I lose control, it's gonna come crashing down on me. I've got an idea. Okay. I think if I use my tall desk chair and I jack it up a little bit here, I think this might work. Oh yeah. Way more control. <laughs> Everything's fine. Okay. Success. This is the one I'm hoping for. <gasps> First try, success, baby. Now the question becomes, do I have a charger? Show sure do. Just missing this piece, which I can get from another laptop. Hooray. I don't know what's on here, to be honest. So let's find out. I found some great footage. Now, quick backstory. Growing up when people would ask me, Spencer, you grow up, I would typically answer an entertainer, specifically an actor or a singer. And my like singing debut, I was five years old and I sang at my aunt's wedding. But for me, this didn't really get legit until I got to high school. And my first major role in a musical was part of the barbershop quartet in the musical, The Music Man. Check this out. Lighter rose, I'm home again, rose without a sweetheart to my name. I'm gonna be very shameless and say that that year, I think we stole the show as the Barbershop Quartet. Hello, who doesn't love a Barbershop Quartet? So this is where my passion really came alive. And then when I went to university, I decided to study communication because it was the closest thing to theater where I could potentially make some money. So I was studying journalism, broadcast journalism, and then I also did like an undeclared minor in theater. And it was while I was in Utah that I was working really hard towards this dream, not only in school, but outside of school. I landed my first role in a musical, uh, show where I was actually paid. So I did a musical called No No Nanette and it just so happened the f uh, choreographer was the same choreographer that did all of the dancing for the movie Footloose, the original. We did like a show Monday through Friday in the evening and then we did two shows on Saturday, a matinee and then an evening show and then one show on Sunday. It was so fun. From there, I started to get more interested into journalism and broadcast journalism, and that's when I met my friend Reed. I was working at Old Navy. He'd come in to buy a pair of jeans. I helped them. The next day he called and said, hey, I'm a reporter for ABC News, and I would love to do a story on you. And I was like, okay. Uh, we became really good friends. He did the story. High school in Rock Springs, Wyoming, saw Spencer center stage singing in school plays. Cheerleading opened the door to athletics. And by 21, Spencer is a senior at Westminster College, holding down a job at Old Navy and Sugar House and teaching everywhere he goes. And then that turned into an internship 
for a human interest show they had in Salt Lake City at the time called Good Things Utah. I was an intern for an entire semester as a production assistant, and I really got to learn and see how an actual show behind the scenes runs. Uh, my job was to sort of just get water and make sure the guests were taken care of and do any of the other grunt work. I also had to wash all the dishes after every cooking segment, which like I hated, but I'm happy to like do the work to get to where I needed to go. So I graduate university and I had some amazing acting teachers who sat me down and said, listen, Spencer, we think you could actually make this a career if you wanted to, but you know, just based on how Hollywood is, specifically with folks with disabilities, probably gonna end up being the sidekick for most of the roles. But if you're okay with that, you should, you know, chase it. That's what I thought I was gonna do. Now I had some family friends that lived in California and one of them worked in HR at Paramount Pictures. So I reached out to them and then this next, this next bunch of footage that I found is my friend John and his friend Sarah and I road tripped from, I had moved to Phoenix, Arizona by this time. We road tripped from Phoenix to California so that I could interview at Paramount Pictures. For obvious reasons, I didn't film going to Paramount Pictures and they were just very kind and just offered me a general interview. Nothing ever came of it, but I was at least grateful that I got to be a part of it. Uh, I went back to Arizona and couldn't get a job in broadcast journalism, ended up getting a job at a salon and spa. Ma, ma, ma. Fast forward, my friend Reed, who I had initially met in university, invites me to go to Kenya and that's when he became a motivational speaker. And that's initially why I moved to Canada uh, to work for an organization where for the last 12 years, that's what I've been doing. And it turns out all of that, you know, acting training came in handy for becoming a speaker. I didn't have stage fright. I knew how to tell a story, although I needed some mentorship on, on how to tell my own story. And that's sort of how my career developed into a motivational speaker. All of that brings us to today where, you know, I, I worked really hard and studied theater, studied musical theater. I understood um, how a show is produced and put together. I've been behind the scenes. I've been in front of the scenes. Uh, I've been a motivational speaker, and now I'm here hanging out with y'all on YouTube, hoping to get back into entertainment. One of my idols back in the day was Rosie O'Donnell. She had her own talk show, and it was incredible. It was everything that I loved. It was pop culture. It was musical theater. It was celebrities. It was heart. It was awareness. It was truth. It was, it was all of those things. And that's sort of what I've been working towards now is my own show at some point and being the first gay disabled host of that. So this was actually a really beautiful reminder and trip down memory lane, thanks for coming with me, on that initial dream and how I've been trying to cultivate that for the last 40 years. What happens next? Who knows? Stay tuned. As always, you're my new best friend. Call me every five minutes. Thanks for coming on this journey. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.